What is up, Difference Makers? Welcome back to Real Talk, hosted by Brian Paduska, powered by The Difference. It's your favorite LO, Loan Officer Mark. It is Cinco de Mayo. It is a brand new month, which means it is a brand new topic. I've got a favorite person of mine who is special guest today, Mr. Sean Lashley, Mr. 10K. Lendon, hit that music. Let's go, y'all. <laughs> is up everybody happy cinco de mayo mark thanks for that intro i uh, love the energy that you bring every time uh which is exactly why we have you on the first of the first show of the month so welcome to the month of may here we are um new business topic of the month which is as mark mentioned is team um and we'll go in multiple different directions on that so building teams what is team uh, what is the importance of teams? Uh, so we're going to go multiple different directions on that topic. Uh, but as usual, uh, the first week of and first show of the month, we have Kendra Kennedy and we have Mark Koretsky, Loan Officer Mark, as our co-host. For those of you who hasn't, haven't seen the show before, this is Real Talk with Brian Paduska. What we do is we have rotating co-hosts, uh, business owners. Uh, they bring on their uh, their guests every week. We discuss the business topic of the week as well as put the spotlight on those business owners and let them uh, just tell us their story and tell us how they got to where, where they're at. Uh, if you don't know what the difference is, the difference is a larger platform that we operate off of. Uh, Lennon Wilson is a creator of the difference. I've been with Lennon for really since its inception and we've migrated uh, from in studio to you know what we're doing right now. Um, to where we're going, and we've got some really cool things planned in the future. So um, I'm excited to be part of the difference, one of the founding members, I guess you can say. Um, and then now going into the future, we've got a lot of really cool stuff planned. So um, really quick on my company, Real Property Management Focus, where we focus on your real estate investments. What we do, we are a full service real estate brokerage, uh, really focusing on investing investors, who have hopefully multiple properties are strategic about it and want a you know trusted advisor when it comes to real estate investing. Uh, we are here to take you as the investor out of, out of the day to day management of your property, uh, protect your property, get the right people into your property, um, and then of course on the back end when you're ready to sell it, we can help you with that too. So that is real property management focus in a nutshell where we focus on your real estate investments. That being said, without further ado, Lennon, if you don't mind, let's bring in our co-hosts for the week. Oh my hey God! Guys. There, can how we going? Me? We can we can hear you. So, Kendra Kendra has a little bit of news to share. So she's in a new uh, new studio there with some new equipment. So she she's been yep. uh, testing it out backstage. <laughs> um, so she'll have a little bit of news to share. But um, welcome, guys. Uh, my my favorite first week hosts. Man, I, I don't know how, but it is literally like not only each day goes by faster than the last, but each week and each month. And we're about to be halfway through the year. I'm about to be turning 30 in two weeks. I have no idea. Oh, my heavens, you're just so old. See, this, this little violin's <laughs> playing just for you. Yeah. The birthday present's my way. See, I can relate to the comment about I'm not sure how we got to almost halfway through the year, but I have a hard time relating to the 30 thing well i mean yeah. you relate because doesn't 30 feel like it was yesterday because i feel like totally. i don't i don't know everything was just yesterday <laughs> yes it definitely feels like it was yesterday because i have my youngest son graduating from college on saturday and my oldest is getting married the end of may so trust oh. me it feels like it was just yesterday when they were babies and harassing their brothers and you know so it's yeah it also, feels, it, it also feels like, in a way, even though the weather doesn't support it, I feel like we're all feeling kind of like it's the dog days of summer. And I feel yeah. like 
this is the perfect time for me to come in and for me to bring in my guest and actually bring us some energy because everybody's feeling it, but in a way we've all just got to attack it. And in a way that's really why time goes by so fast, right? Exactly. Well, that's good, good framing there. And yes, I met your guest for the first time backstage and uh, I'm looking forward to, to feeling some of he his energy because he's a high energy individual. Um, preliminary open th opening thoughts about, uh, about team and, and team building and, and uh, you know, just, just give me a, give me a real quick soundbite from each of you. And then Mark, I do want you to introduce and bring in your guest. Well, I mean, I guess to lead it off, I mean, I am nothing without my team and I know it and I'm the leader of it and I'm the face of it. But at the end of the day, without really all of the work that goes in behind the scenes, me as the entrepreneur, me as the leader, me as the loan officer, I am nothing. Right. And that goes with my mortgage support and operations that goes with my real estate partners and really the partnership we have and the teamwork we have. And it goes along with all of the, the integral parts of the transaction, never mind the vendors and everybody that all has to come together for a common goal. And so there is team in every part of my day and every part of my life. And so I'm always excited to talk about it. I think we can all get better at it. And I think we've all got something to learn when it comes to building it. I agree. And I'm ditto what Mark said, because team in my industry and in our industry is one of the most important things. Your team members, the people behind you, the people that support you, the people you support. And just, I mean, honestly, I'm only as strong and as great as the title company I'm working for and the escrow officers that I work with and how sellable they are and how amazing, you know, they are as well as their title pool and being able to get it done efficiently, quickly, and be able to close anything and everything, which is one of the reasons why I made the exciting move I did was because of all the opportunities I have. And the other side of that, the team to me always means what my realtors need is I'm a part of their team because I want, and are my lenders, I want to be that valuable team member that they see is that I'm helping them grow their business because a realtor's only as to, to me as good at what they do is it as the team members they are that they refer to so you know don't don't be referring people out as your team your power we call it a power team your 20 your 10 or 20 power team and it could be a few members of each of variety of vendors you know don't just be sending people these names and numbers unless you know them unless you're they're vetted because you're putting your name and your reputation with it and to me team is such an integral part of being successful in real estate and in any aspect of the real estate industry it's your team it's the people you work with well i, I think that's a great point kendra uh it, it, it real estate more so probably than any industry out there if you don't have a team in place then you're just treading water at best uh, mm -hmm. you're probably drowning uh which is you know they say the statistic is i think 80 percent of realtors quit the business within like two years. Or 88. Yep. Within two years. Yeah. Is it that but here's the thing. I mean, most businesses fail, yes. right? It's not just okay. real estate. Uh, real estate is not, it's what we know and it's what is near and dear to our heart. And I guess this is a great way for me to bring in my guy, Sean 10 K and our special guest, because team is everything for every industry and every business. And really we all i live in the world where we don't control most and so we've got to control what we can control my team has heard me say that a million times my agents have heard me say that a million times my borrowers have heard me say that at least a dozen times throughout a transaction while i'm counseling them but at the end of the day without having first a leader and a vision and then an actual strategy and then exposure to it, I don't think we can actually get to talking about team. And so my special guest today, Mr. 10K, is literally for every business owner, a way for you to have a strategy and attract a team and actually get it out there to the masses and actually help get, reduce the entire friction of getting your information and everything you offer to them. So with all of that being said, let's bring in Sean. Sean, get in here. My man. 
I feel like I have known you for years and it's, it's getting to be that point, but this is the first time on the difference, brother. Welcome. That's right. That's right. Welcome. First of all, it's such a pleasure being here. Kendra, Brian, um, Mark, and all the audience members out there. You know, as I'm listening to the background and I'm hearing the talks of team, absolutely. If you're looking to go big, you definitely need a team in place, guys. If you just want to eat and feed your family, I guess you can do it by yourself. But if you want to make a difference, a team is definitely going to be important. And mm -hmm. selling your vision on your team is absolutely one of the most crucial things to achieve that stick factor. So having a vision is great, but if you can't sell it to your team, you might be in trouble. So I'm here for the conversation. By the way, really quick, Mark, if you can, send me Kendra's business card while we're on the call, a picture of it if you have it. Because as we speak, my team is working on Brian's card. So while we have this conversation, both of you will be able to tap into your new, new digital card before we get off the, the call. So Kendra, Dude, awesome. You already okay. Dude, I love it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I, not only do I get a card, but I need an accent like you were, Sean. That's no cool problem. <laughs> <laughs> what you can do, Kendra, scan what it says Sean 10K. And just okay. take your info, and within 20 minutes, my team is going to put together one of these cards for you. Brian, uh, always okay. the way. I got to do done. that. Bingo. Okay. You know, I'm just so happy and grateful that we have one of those perfect products that we can just shoot it out to the client, and if they fall in love with it, hey, we're in business. We can make things happen. And, and forgive me here, I, as, as we're uh, on here as a team, I'm trying to share us out on, on Facebook. So if, I, if I'm not looking at the screen, that's why, because I'm trying to put a share out. But um, no, so Sean, tell, tell us what your what your business is. Like, what's card? Like, tell, tell us what, what it is you do uh, so the folks know. I mean, cool, they can scan you on, online. So if you're watching online, go ahead, put your phone up. Yeah, give us the backstory, man. All right, no problem. So... Um, long story short, I was born in Guyana, South America. I left when I was nine years old, and I brought the accent with me. So that's where the <laughs> accent is. <laughs> now, um, I've been one of these blessed individuals that I've always practiced saying, okay, go find the money. That's number one. Number two, become one with the money, so to speak. So where I grew up, I didn't see the money within my ethnicity. The money was outside of my ethnicity, was outside of my culture. So my goal was, okay, how do I attract the, the money? So not only did I start reading like a maniac when I was 13 years old, but I always dressed professionally. I'll always be in an Italian clothes with my Italian shoes on and a proper belt. All right. So when I went into the right environments, I was always recognized as that exceptional guy. So I've been through a nice, beautiful journey and... Uh, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I will always get the right amount of attention. So I said, wait a minute, if there's people way smarter than I am, but they're not achieving as much as I am, how can I help that individual? So I said, okay, if we can create a product that will take away the biases and give everyone an even playing ground, then we can be onto something. So we created the digital business card where you can put all the contact points into one place. Your website, phone number, email, social media, Everything that a client needs from you so they can say yes to do business with you, put it all in one place. You got Brian, the reality of the situation is you're not the only company in the marketplace. But if you present yourself and you put everything there is to know about you in front of your clients, let them make a decision whether they want to call Brian yes or no. So our goal is to put everything all in one place. So when your client gets a chance to actually look into everything that you're connected to. They can make a decision whether whether they want to go with you, yes or no. Where are we? One second, I just came off the month. What just happened there? You're still here. Oh, okay, cool. I'm yeah, we got you. Now. There we go. Yeah, so the reality of the situation is our goal was to create a product that can solve a simple problem. And that simple problem was how do we stay in contact when we when we're networking? All right, either I'm losing my mind or I'm just not seeing the monitor. Where do I go from here? One second. We can see you loud and clear, but uh, see you ain't yeah. hear you loud and clear. All right. No. Uh, why don't Why don't we go to break while he's uh while he's yeah. trying to figure that out? Right yeah, now. Let's do that.
Today's show is brought to you by the following small businesses. Liberator Health Insurance, the best value in the health insurance industry. Are you paying too much for your health insurance? Would you like to hear about an alternative to your current health insurance? How about an average of around 30 to 50% savings on your premiums? At Liberator Health Insurance, you can see any doctor, any hospital, small copays, and low deductibles, and there is no referral to see a specialist, all with very affordable premiums. For a quick quote, call or text Greg Holberg today at 214886. 4688. And buy. Wines with an Appeal. Wines with an Appeal offers entertaining and educational wine tasting events to help you fundraise, recognize your clients, or just have a fun night out with friends. At our fundraising events, we strive to provide a nice variety of reds, whites, sparkling, and dessert wines. We typically offer a good variety of the core varietals, along with some interesting blends. We sample wines from all over the world. Call or email for details on how it works and how your event could be available at no cost to you. And now back to the show. All right. John, are you good? I'm good now. Okay. Well, you're, you're visually frozen, but we can hear you just fine. So as long as you're good, uh-oh, now it looks like we might have lost him. Well, he'll be back. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let him back on if he does. Well, that's cool. So I'm I'm kind of intrigued. I want to, I want to see what my card looks like. This is going to be awesome. I, the anticipation is uh, is eating at me here. Um, so, so so I I have I am so happy to bring him to the forefront, and I'm so excited to introduce him to the DFW. Um, I met Sean on Clubhouse of all people or of all places, um, and I met him and his wife in. Atlanta at a live meetup and he is literally like that that was all I knew was the audio version of Sean and the and the let's go Sean and then I had the pleasure of meeting this guy and having dinner with him and his beautiful wife and they both are literally just they are positive to be around and I feel like that is what we need and I feel like in a way that's what we all need with our teams, right? Mm -hmm. and I have been talking with a lot of lenders, with a lot of agents, with a lot of people that we're working with that are moving places and changing companies. And a lot of that boils down to team. And a lot of it boils down to that leadership. And so, Sean, I'm glad you're back because as the leader of a company that serves literally every company I know, <laughs> How, what are you doing to really feed into yourself? I know what you do, but I mean, tell me about what you've done at, on a personal development journey to become the team leader that you are today before we even get to your team. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Mark. Yeah, one of the things that's most important, guys, is um, becoming very clear on what you want. That's step one. Mm -hmm. Step two, recognize the work that needs to be done to turn you into that quote-unquote machine that will be necessary to take you to that um, goal or that dream that you desire to um, approach. So one of the things that was very important for me, guys, was uh, reading. I read a lot. I have a library with over 1,138 books on it. My Audible library, it's over 1,100 books on it. And uh, the reason for it is very simple. If smarter people than us figured it out, why do we need to go through all the trial and errors? Let's just read their books and then live vicariously uh, through them and basically leapfrog years ahead of everyone else in front of us. So one of the things that I'm focused on is always studying the marketplace, always studying everyone else that's in my space, and then make a bold claim to jump 10 years ahead of them. So when you work with that mindset and you convince yourself that it's possible, then you're going to destroy everything that's in front of you. That's quote unquote call competition. Don't, go, don't try to be one month, one year, two months in front of them. Nope. Try to think 10 years outside of your competition, guys. I'm pretty sure if, while we're speaking, if I find out what industry you guys are in, I can share with you just a few simple strategies that will separate you from the quote-unquote best in the industry. And it's not, it's not, it's not that of a heavy um, task in your hand. You probably just didn't think of a 10-year advantage as yet. So for me, Mark, is just basically reading and being very present. 
when I'm speaking to clients to see where the needs and opportunities present itself. Dude, I, I like that. So I, I take a couple of nuggets out of there. Clarify, clarify the goal and goals, plural, maybe, but make right. it very clear. Um, don't recreate the wheel, right? Re That's right? Gather as much information as you can. Learn from the experts. Don't recreate the wheel. And then you can leapfrog 10 years ahead. There right? you go. That's I love it. it. I love it. And I mean, what is the mission, right? Like, what is driving it? What is like, what are you doing all of this for? Right. And I, I know Sean's got that as the money's behind it. I know the disc and I, I know what Sean's is, but it's different for all of us. Right. And so being able to diagnose that and then leaning into it and jumping into it. And you didn't say it, but like my favorite metaphor, just burning the damn ships right? And giving yourself no way out. And then it's really easier to think 10 years ahead because you've got no other choice. Yeah. You know, Mark, when we came on to Clubhouse, our introduction on the Clubhouse was we're living tree on steroids. That was our claim. That was our claim into the marketplace because I wanted to find the biggest player in the room and punch him in the face. End of story. So I said, we're living tree on steroids. That's who we are. That's what we do. Now, we came up with so many strategies that will separate us from Linktree. It's crazy. And just to share with everyone in this room right now, that's going to basically, your draws are going to drop, drop right now. With our digital business card, we have one button that says, my network. Kendra, you know a lawyer, you know a plumber, you know an accountant, you know a hard money lender, you know all of these guys. How about if there yeah. was a button on your digital card that give instant access to all of your network that you wish to promote. So if someone admires you, if someone looks up to you, they're like, wow, who does Kendra's here? And they can touch your network and find your, your beautician. They can find your hairstylist. And then you can now be the portal for getting your network more business. How will that make you feel? How will that position that's, the eyes of your, your, um, your network? That's big. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's impressive, especially if a realtor basically has something like that where all, they can turn around and just say, here's my network. You know, somebody asked for a plumber, they asked for a lender, they asked for an electrician, they asked for a home warranty. And yep. if you've got that list ready to go and it's just sitting there electronically, digitally, it's huge. That That's just, right. it's a no brainer. It's yeah. brilliant. That's it. So those are the simple little things that we do to separate you from everyone else. And then here's another one. Just to put a second one on you. So Kendra, are you are you a lender? What's your title? I am a sales exec with a title company. So I work for Stewart Title. Okay. So I work with lenders. I work with realtors. I work with property managers. I work with anybody that has anything to do with a real estate transaction. So Land, commercial, girl. residential. So I'll call you the title girl. Is that okay? The title girl. Yep, I'm the title girl. All yep. right, cool. So here's one <laughs> of the really, here's one of the really cool um secrets. When you try the product and you fall in love with it, which I'm pretty sure you will, every client that closes a transaction with you, you can sponsor them one of the cards. And one button on that card is going to say, for all your title needs, contact Kendra. And when they tap on that button, your card pops up. Again. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So these are strategies that if you take into consideration and you look into it, you're literally going to separate yourself from everyone. Your goal is not to go find new clients. Your goal is for your existing clients to introduce you to their network. That's it. That's brilliant. Well, if there's any way to build a team, it's freaking attract, be different and attract yep. people to you, right? Exactly. Man, there's so much there, Sean. I know, I know I've been helping you articulate this real estate uh, pitch, but... You've got it down pretty good now. <laughs> Everything I know about real estate guys are learning from Mark. Let me put it out there. Private consultant. There we go. <laughs> I'll bill you later. <laughs> there we go. No, but um, just think, uh, sorry, you first, Brian. No, no. So I, I just wanted to touch on, on the clubhouse concept, right? Because uh, I know not everybody knows it. I didn't know it until Mark introduced me to what clubhouse is. So tell the audience what clubhouse is and what it's done for you and really how you've just kind of launch padded with that 
Okay, so Clubhouse is an audio interactive app. Like how we can be doing video and audio here, Clubhouse is audio only. So I, I, was, um, I was being told of Clubhouse from a few friends of mine, lawyers, doctors, all these snobby individuals, and I wouldn't pay it any mind because I'm like, yep, that's just not for me. So one of my buddies sent me an invite, and this is how my real friends talk to me. Get your ass in Clubhouse right now. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to Clubhouse right now. So when I went out to Clubhouse the first day, guys, um, it was too noisy for me. It was just too much happening. But then on the second day, I was asked to introduce myself. I made an introduction, and in five minutes, I sold 40, 40, 40 cards. So I literally made, no, no, it was 30, sorry. I made $3,000 in five minutes. Guys, needless to say, I became hooked. So as I became hooked on it now, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Focus. <laughs> How can I capitalize on this platform? So what we did, we started networking with everyone. One of my biggest rules of any business, when I walk into the room, I'm looking for the unicorn. I'm looking for the wheel. I want to find the biggest mover and shaker in that room, and that's going to be my target for the evening. That's it. So when I walk into Clubhouse, I will always go to the top left corner and I'll have my team, the word again, team, I'll have my team make a card for that individual and I'll send it to the back channel. And I'll say, hey man, great room. I'm getting tremendous amount of value. I just want to give back something. Here you go. So I will send them the card and then, you know, it's traveling, word is traveling. So now what we do is we create a networking card for every room on Clubhouse. If you own a club, we create a networking card for that club. And then when your moderator or your, your visiting room, if you have a 10K card, you can be listed onto the directory for that um, room. And then what we do now is that we also offer an advertising component to that. So what I did, I got a partnership with every club owner and clubhouse. The forward thinking ones. So if they want to win, if they want to do something great, Start a club, let's partner, and let's start kicking some butts together. Your well, clubhouse has been a complete treasure chest for us, guys. I haven't seen it. I mean, there's been only a few people that I've seen even come close to leveraging a, a application, a shiny toy, a widget for really what is possible for any of us. Um, and I mean, I... I I know exactly what you mean by that overwhelming, noisy feeling. And I, I mean, it still kind of creeps in every now and again. But I think you with the inten intentionality and that North Star you've got have really, I mean, everybody knows the name, everybody knows the brand. And I, I mean, everybody is word of mouth pushing you further and further. Yeah, appreciate that. And the reality of the situation is I will tell everyone, be involved with a good product. If you can sell that product to your grandma, your mom, and your sibling, leave that product alone and walk away. Because it doesn't matter if you're a crappy salesperson or you are a great salesperson. Your family and friends will have to live with that product. So you might as well find something that's good. I've always been great at sales, but my one wish to God was to give me a really good product that can change the world. And in my opinion, this digital card is that product because it's literally designed for 8 billion people. Even if you're a student, you can use our product because on the card, we can put a button that says my resume. And when you click on the resume and you have the unlock code, you can unlock the resume of that student and you can see what their resume look like. If students are going to colleges or different, to try for different sports, and you want to see what their grades look like and all this kind of stuff, that can actually be on their card that's password protected. So as they supply the password, the authority can unlock it and see exactly who they're dealing with. And here's what I think as well. In my opinion, we're all individually talented at something. So Brian, when we get a chance to meet and interact, and I walk away, I want Brian to say, who was that guy? Okay, good. So when Brian goes to shotmk.com, and he sees who that guy was. You can learn more about us. Most importantly, you can further connect and contact us. So that's what that's all about for us. All right. Well, I love that. Um, and that takes us right up to our next break. So what I want to do, uh, thank you for sharing that, Sean. That's awesome. What I want to do after the break 
is get into the actual nuts and bolts of team, how you build it, what you're looking for. So let's do that on the back side. Okay. The difference is made possible by the following small businesses. Real property management focus. An unmatched level of service to property owners, investors, and tenants throughout the DFW Metroplex. When you need a trusted roofing company on your side to help you out with storm damage repair for your roof, call Cook DFW Roofing. Serving Anna, Melissa, Princeton, Prosper, Van Alstein, and all of the DFW area. Red Branch Realty and owner realtor Ashley Gentry are true champions at every level. As a top producer, Ashley Gentry and Red Branch Realty truly embody their mission of being your supporter and partner in your personal real estate journey. So if finding the best representation possible in achieving the American dream of homeownership is important to you, give Ashley a call at 972-342-1869. Whether tech general contracting, we make your home renovation dreams a reality. And by Alan Lester, branch manager and team lead for The One Group, a branch of Town Square Mortgage. With over 22 years in the mortgage lending industry, Allen and Town Square Mortgage have many loan program options available from conventional, FHA, VA, USDA, Jumbo, and many investor and self-employed programs. So if you're looking for the best in the business, give Allen a call at 214-681. 0234. For more information about our sponsors and our services, or if you would like information on how you and your business can partner with or sponsor this show, or others like it, just check the show description or comments for the relevant links and contact information. And now back to the show. All right. Thanks to the friends of the program. All good people, all good companies. So uh, couldn't be here without you. We appreciate your support. Now back to team building and who we're looking for on our team. Who wants to take a stab first at this one? What are you looking for when you're building a team? A vision. A vision. vision. I would like, why would somebody join your team? I'm right. looking for someone that, that is obsessed with self-improvement. I want to, I want to put a team I, yeah, coaching 14 years. Um, when you when you can put together a group of people like I mean that's Michael Jordan you talked about the Bulls that's Michael Jordan front back all the way around um, he didn't want anybody that wasn't willing to work harder than they worked yesterday and figure out a way to be better and I think that if you can find that first everything else falls into place. Well, I, I like that. So let's let, and I as you guys know me uh, as you've watched the show over the, the last couple of years or whatnot, you know right that. Now. When this topic of sports comes up, I'm going to dive into it. So um, especially when we're talking about my bullies, right? My bulls of the, the mid 90s, the Jordan Bulls. And for those of you who saw the documentary, um, I forget what it's called off the top of my head right now, but the one that came out a year and a half ago, uh, that was one of the main points of that is, is that, you know, as great as Michael Jordan is or was at the time, you know, debate whether or not he's the greatest of all time or whether LeBron is that, that debate can go on forever. But in my opinion, I already know the answer to it. Um, he was great in the beginning, was great at, and less great at the end, but the difference between when he started and when that quote unquote dynasty ended was the development of the team around him. Right. As, as great as Jordan was, he couldn't put a team on his back and win a championship. And how many times did they fail? He thought he could, I was about to say. Yeah. So how many times did they fail before they finally got over the Detroit Pistons hump? And and then once they once they figured it out and had the right team in place. Now, even when they had the right team in place, they had to reconfigure that a few times too to keep it going. So um, Well, and, and that's where I think I mean, yes, you need to attract like people that are good people that are working on themselves and, and relentless in the pursuit of that next great thing for them and the company. But you don't get there without actually having a vision and actually planning a flag and saying, this is what we believe in. This is what we believe in not doing. This is who we are. This is who we're not. And then actually taking it from there. Because you don't just bring on this amazing talent that everybody wants. And we all know 
we all have job openings. There's a lot of unemployment being filed and the jobs aren't getting filled, right? And we have every employer out there that's losing their employees and a lot of the times their best ones. And so you can attract all of these people to you, but if you don't have the vision and the mission and the actual environment for these people to thrive in, you have no way of actually continuing that, perpetuating it and actually taking that next step. Well, and, and I, I like your perspective, Mark, from the fact of the, as the leader of that team, you need to provide the vision for your team, right? And can you get vision from your, your teammates? Of course you can. Um, but in order to attract and build a team, you're absolutely right. You have to set a vision. As the leader of that, and set it, you've set the vision, now what are you looking for in your teammates? You know, Lennon said kind of coachability, right? The ability to, to self-improve. Um, I throw out there somebody willing to, to, to go, go to war, so to speak, right? So hard work. Um, dig into the trenches, get, get down and dirty as you need to. Um, what are some other qualities that you guys are looking for? One thing, let me, I, I wanted to say something about Mark's, Mark's vision. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. And, and what I see a lot with businesses is that solopreneur with a vision of changing the world, right? And they get involved and they start putting their team together and they didn't vet the team well enough to know that the team would support that vision. And then now all of a sudden you've got 10 to 15 people that are wanting to create and change the culture to what, to what fits them. And somewhere along the way, the vision gets completely skewed from what the original um, creator started. And so Mark, I think that I, I, it, it all starts with vision. It, it, it does. Somebody had a, a dream. You know, just like Sean. Sean had a dream of what he's doing. He's got that vision. He can articulate that vision very well. And I guarantee you he's so committed to it, he wouldn't let anyone else on the team start to steer it in a direction that, that he didn't feel comfortable with. And I think that, that that goes with leadership, is you've got to be strong enough sometimes to stand up for yourself and, and, and your vision and say, you know, I can appreciate everybody's – perspective but here's where we have to go with this and that's that's the hard part about building that team right i think that's the struggle a lot of small businesses have is we are so desperate to get help we forget to really vet the people that we that we that are going to be good teammates i think that's one of the most important things i'm oh, sorry go ahead after you after you Oh, basically, I think, Bill, exactly what you said, London, is so important with the vetting because just if you don't know exactly who you are, you're basically in bed with, as in you have your name is being put with their name when you were referring somebody out to go into your home as a plumber or to come to, say, even a, you know, to, to redo a bathroom because that home needed a, the bathroom redone just so it could be sold. And this person basically takes, you know, just it becomes a nightmare for your your client or your client to be. Now you've got more problems and more issues. It's it's they it's vetting. It's basically knowing who you're referring, knowing who your power team is, knowing and knowing also knowing who you need, who you really need, who you need to know. And is it, you know, and for instance, in title, right now with the market being what it is. You know, we're doing the title shuffle, as you could say, as, as uh, Brian has alluded, I did um, leave one title company and, and I'm now at actually a much larger um, Stuart title and, and Stuart title Richardson and um, in North Dallas in the commercial office. And it's given me the opportunity to offer even more for my clients. So to be even that more power player of a team member to them so that I can still do many of the things I was doing before, but even more so. I've got more farming capability, more things, more areas I can help them grow their business. But with for me, when I see a brand new agent that comes in or even a, a new lender that comes in, a new LO, it's it's like, okay, what, what are your goals? What's your vision? And then 
do you know what you need to achieve it? How do you want to achieve it? How are you going to build your sphere? Are you going to farm after a neighborhood or do you have a sphere database? How are you going to get your leads? How are you going to get your, your business? Because you're not, they're an entrepreneur. And if they do not realize going in, I need all these people behind me. I need this power. Oh, Kendra froze. Uh-oh. Oh, Kendra froze. Hey, I wanted to ask Sean something real quick. Um, you talked about clarity right at the beginning of the show. Yep. How important is it? And you've put together, obviously, an incredible team that can, can, can function in such an efficient manner. How important is it for your team to have clarity? I mean, it, you got to have clarity as the leader. And I think to, to Kendra's point, not to get go too far off this, Mark, I think you can you – can, uh, speak to this at some point. I think so many people get involved in new industries and, and new careers and they don't have clarity of who they are and what they want to be within that career. And they struggle because they're always, sometimes we're trying to be other somebody else, somebody we're not, because we look around and we see someone that appears to be successful and we want to imitate them. We don't know them. We don't know what their struggles were. We don't even know based on, you know, with social media now, you don't know what everybody's struggling through because everybody looks like it's a Super Bowl every day and they're winning. Um, but talk about that, Sean. Talk about the clarity, if you don't mind. And I'm not trying to hijack this, but I just love what, what Sean said because I see it every day with the people that I interview and the people that we talk to. You ask them some questions and they can't define who it is they are and what they're trying to do. I love it. So this is this is going to get a little deep, guys. So bear with me on this one. So the fact that you know I'm a quote unquote black man. Let's have a conversation purposes. There's always this notion of unequal um, share of wealth, finances, and all this bullshit. So I just do believe that everyone was equally yoked, and if everyone put in the work and follow the principles of success. We'll all be successful too. So I don't buy into the black and white bullshit, okay? And I hope these languages are um, accepted. So we're Texas based. There we go. So <laughs> yeah, when, fire away, man. Fire away. You're yeah. good. <laughs> so when I started building teams, one of the secrets to my success has always been I'm not hiring an employee. I'm going to mentor you for 12 months. And after 12 months, we're going to partner up on a project together. So this has always been my strategy in onboarding individual into my organization for over a decade. So again, I don't take on employees. We're going to mentor you for 12 months to make sure we're the right fit and we're on the same frequency. After 12 months, we'll make the investment financially to make sure we have a partnership taking place. And it's just a no brainer guys. So when the pandemic came, you know, we would I have businesses in the shopping mall. So we're taking home stacks of stacks every week. Wife does not need a budget. Every week they're at some Airbnb having fun, as every happy wife should. So when the, when the pandemic hit, guys, we're living off of the reserve for like four or five months. Then I'm like, wait a minute. This is not cool. Business is not running. We're spending. The deficit is going to come. So we reached out to the government, guys, to get one of those assistants. So... We paid our taxes, there was money in the account, everything was good, except for one thing. We didn't have one W-2 employee because it doesn't fit our culture. So when the government said no to me, my wife knows I'm extremely sensitive. So when the government said no to me, I did not ask again. I said, "Hun, you're not gonna see me for the next four months. I'll be in my office building something that is so indestructible that it doesn't matter what hit the, the world again, we will not be affected ever again. And we perfected the 10K card, guys. And uh, it's always been my mindset because I was told no by the government for not having one W-2 employee because in my opinion, I no disrespect to anyone out there on the W-2 um, stuff, but when you transition to 1099, you'll see what real freedom is. <laughs> so when they said no to me, I went on a mission of freeing everyone within that W-2 camp or giving them the option to hop over into the 1099 situation. So all of my energy, all of my focus, even my memory, when they came on board, and it's the same philosophy, work with us for 12 months. After 12 months, we're going to do a partnership together because it gives me 12 months for you to understand me and for me to understand you. And then after we get to that place, 
The partnership was just going to be um, a marriage made in heaven. So I was very clear on what I wanted, guys. And uh, I was contacted approximately seven months ago by a wealthy, a wealthy guy. He saw what I'm doing. He said, look, I love this. So he knew that we had been on taking this product outside of the U.S. And he said, look, I want this part of the world, a, a spot in Europe. I said, sure, no problem. The franchise fee is going to be 100K, not a big deal. Then he came back and he said, I want to do more with you. I want to partner up with you. I want to put a couple million dollars into the company. And then I want us to take this where you want to do it two years. We can do it now. But then he put a few clauses in the contract that I was not happy with. And I'll tell you guys what that is. He said, you have the audacity to me. I want a white CEO and I want a white financial controller for marketing purposes. When he said that shit to you guys, I was like, that's the deal breaking for me. So I made a decision, and I'm so happy and grateful he was honest because it showed me how he was thinking. And I can't be in a partnership with someone who's thinking like that because I'm embodying this thing that we're all equal, life is fair, and all that kind of good stuff. So what I did was I created a 10-year strategy, guys, that we're going to form one of the biggest collaboration ever, especially here in the U.S., to make sure the 10K card product can be everywhere in front of everyone, in my opinion. So don't get mad when things are not going your way. Once you are very clear on your outcome, making decisions are very easy. Because when you're very clear on the outcome, you're not going to be seduced by the wrong thing. Because common sense is going to tell you, this is not a part of the meal I'm trying to create. So if the ingredients that pops up in front of you fits the end goal, go for it. If it's not fitting the end goal, push it to the side. Always know if you believe in God, or whoever you believe in, that perfect formula is going to come in front of you. And everything that's in front of you is to be used, good or bad. So don't discard anything, guys. Don't whine, bitch, and complain for the formula that's being put in front of us. Use the formula and create the life that you really want to create. So be very, very clear on your outcome, guys. And when I'm, when I'm looking to recruit members to join our team, I'm looking for someone who cares about others on a genuine level. I don't care where you are, but with more, what are you going to do with it? That's what I want to find out. With more, what are you going to do? And if you find the individuals that will less and add value to others, I want to grow and develop that individual. And that's why I need an entire year with someone before I can say we're going to do a deal together, yes or no. Because I'm going to put them in challenging situations. I'll put them in tough situations just to see how they're going to respond to the pressure. And once they have integrity in all that they do, then they can become a partner of us, and then we can expand and grow together. How was that, London? <laughs> that was good. Yeah. If, all right, if, we gotta we gotta cut the I break had, real quick, yeah. but that was awesome. There's a lot of nuggets I want to pull back on. Go for it, London. Okay. The Difference Radio live stream and podcast, the voice of small businesses and the communities they serve. Over the last 24 months, The Difference has evolved into a powerful internet media company that helps small businesses and local communities and nonprofit organizations create, produce, broadcast, and distribute a variety of shows, all designed to empower our communities, the businesses, the people, the places, and the events that make our cities, communities, and the folks that live there so very special. With almost a million and a half viewers and listeners in the last two years, The Difference and its unique strategy of positive impact branding has helped communities and small businesses be seen, be heard, and be remembered. In a world that is consumed with negative press, media manipulation, and propaganda, The Difference, along with many others who believe in and support The Difference, understand that there is no better way to make the difference in our communities than to highlight the unsung heroes and high achievers that call our towns and communities home. And we wanted to create a platform that does just that. One that brings awareness to and reminds folks of the goodness that lives within so many of us and our neighbors. And don't forget to hit that like, follow, and subscribe button and tune in each week so you can experience the difference. And we're back. Smile on his face. I love it. (laughs) Welcome back. Well... Sean, I, you know, I picked up on your energy level before we started. I, I definitely got a good, good dose of it in that last little, uh, that last little description and, and uh, your, your, 
I don't want to say die because that, 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 that it was motivational. Put it that way. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I love the fact uh, your vision of partnering with somebody, mentoring somebody for twelve months. Um, that's it. I've never heard that approach before, so I, I like that. Tell me, sure. me, right? tell me how you came up with that philosophy versus the more conventional method. Read it in a book. Very good. So whenever, when I was younger, I came into, let's put it this way. I had a spiritual awakening where eight years ago, when I say spiritual awakening, I'm one of those individuals that's very happy, blessed, and grateful to understand exactly who I am and what my purpose on this planet is. I'm so in love with it. I'm one of those guys that if tomorrow does not exist, I'm happy with what we did today, up until today. So every day I'm literally walking on purpose, I'm in purpose, I'm adding value wherever we go. Now, one thing I am aware of, um, Brian, there's only one Brian. There's only you. And if someone is going to tell you, Brian, you're going to be an employee for the rest of your life. You're going to be here to work with someone else for the rest of your life. It doesn't quite make sense for me. But if I can bring you on board and say, hey, Brian, here's the thing. I understand you are a unique individual. I have a major project I'm working on. I need you to help me push this project a little further ahead. And in 12 months, I want to look at what's your passion, what's your drive, what's your goals and dreams. And if our project can help you achieve your drive, your goals and dreams, I think we can be onto something. So you walk into the bigger picture understanding, I'm going to tap into a bigger resource than myself that in 12 months later would be able to help me to support me in my vision for what I want to do for my family. So when you have that conversation, Brian, one year of a trade-off for a start is so much better than someone trying to blindfold you into an occupation for 30 years. And um, also, I don't think you're going to be quite happy walking into a ballroom, and then every time you go to a ballroom, you're just the guy that worked for the company that put together the ballroom together. Brian, I think at some point you want to actually host the damn ballroom. And I do believe that life should be a cycle. So at some part of that cycle, you want to be ahead of that cycle. So it's just a moment of time when it's going to be your turn, so to speak. So everyone that we get into contact with, I'm just so happy and grateful that I'm formulating companies that can encompass everyone along our path. My son is 17 years old. I went, when he's 18 years old, guys, he's literally walking out of school with a business that's going to be servicing our company. Okay, so he's already walking out of school with an idea that fits into a bigger a bigger vision. And that's what we do. That's what we do for everyone because everyone is unique in their own way and everyone have the right to be the leader of their own destiny. And um, you okay. can't always do that from a, um, a W2 position. I am just sold on the 1099 vision. <laughs> well, I love that. And, and that's, uh, we talk about that a lot on this show. Um, you know, and I was a former W2 now I'm a 1099er. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a journey and it's been a, a exciting and everything else. What I wanted to do real quick, um, I want to show this on screen here just to show the time time frame, right? This is Mark's text to me, and this is my card that you guys created. So the, look at the time on that. It says 2.38 p.m., right? It, that was 10 minutes ago. So that was uh, or not. Yeah, more than that even. So click on this. And basically, you get the screen that Lennon just popped up. So scroll, scroll down. Yeah. And then go down. to the bottom, and you're going to see not only now you have a QR code, but you can also share it to anybody you want. You can text it right from there. You can do anything. It's wild. So this was created by 10K Cards by Sean. There, there's a lot there, right? Within product, within team. Within the world that we're in, in the auto gratification and like instant gratification and like we need it now, like it's Thursday at three o'clock and I haven't applied, but I need a pre-approval like yesterday. And we've got to meet the consumer where they're at, right? And we've got to be fast to that consumer. And so Sean, talk to us a little bit about that because I, I see that smile. I see the gears. I don't want Kendra, don't want Kendra feeling too left out. No, so Kendra, Kendra, 
If you go to your URL, if you go anywhere, you type KendraKennedy.com, you're going to find your card. Brian, because BrianPodusky.com was taken, I added the word meet in front of your name. So if you go to meet Brian Podusky, uh, is it Podusky? Yeah. Podusky. If you put meet BrianPodusky.com, you're also going to find your name. Why is this important? Whenever you're networking, I don't need you to go into your pocket to find your card. I need you to just say, hey, go to KendraKennedy.com, you'll find me. Or go to BrianPodusky.com, you'll find me. And what to do, Kendra, we'll modify the information because you didn't mention that you switched companies that you're working for. So we yeah. can modify it to be your fingerprint. <laughs> so let's let's circle the wagons a little. So it, that's pretty cool. Just saw the just saw the cool um, you know ability to have our own website. All the new business right? coming in already. As we're talking about <laughs> team building, right? Um, yeah. This is a tool where we can literally have our team at our fingertips, and we can yes, share sir. we can share that team to whoever we want in an extremely quick way, um, whether it's through scanning a QR code or literally saying go, go to brianpodusco.com. That's right. And, you know, getting back to the, to the conversation of team building, what I wanted to demonstrate to you guys is while I'm on the call with you, all I had to do was just to send my team, just send a quick text over to the team. The team was able to create this here for oh, you. you know, right? And where this is important for the team as well, guys, is you can create one button and have a link to each and every team member on that link. So when you're networking and you want people to actually meet you, Brian, and to meet your team before they make a decision doing business with you, they can click on the team and see what you have going on. So it depends on how you're structured, how you're positioned, and what you want to share with the public, our product can actually help to facilitate that. So it's definitely in alignment with, okay, how do you want to grow and expand, and most importantly, what does your team look like? And when you have the meet the team button, they can get to meet everyone on your team. So if before making a big decision, they want, they're want wondering like, okay, let me see who is Brian as a team leader. Let me see who Brian is as, you know what I mean, the captain of the vessel. When they tap in with your members and they see what you're doing for your members, if you can do that for your team, imagine what you'll do for us as a client. And most importantly, if your clients, if your team members are happy with you, imagine what as a whole, your company's gonna do it for me. So that's how that's how we look at it. Nice. Love it. Love it. All right. So hey, I've got to ask a question. Um, because I am a sports fan. And I want I want you guys to just we're gonna go around the horn and I want to know what your favorite all time sports team is. Mark, we'll start with you. Whoa, okay. Um, I mean, I'm not on the spot. I haven't paid attention to sports in a long time, but I've got to go, man, I'm, there's so many. I, I got to go with the Patriots. I don't know what year, in a way, the 07 undefeated up to the Super Bowl team. And I think that in and it of itself, like we, can, I think there's a moral and there's a story there and we can build the greatest team, but we don't pull it off when it matters. Are we actually the greatest team? I don't know, but there's 2007, 2008 Patriots, and um, that's the hill I die on. All right, we'll go with that. Sean? I, instead of going with a team, I have two players, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Because they were obsessed, obsessed with being the best, and that's why, in my opinion, they're two of the greatest. I, I can share that with you. For sure. Yeah. Kendra? Oh, I'm going to have to go with the Texas Longhorns, but it was a team from a few years ago. It was that lovely uh, national championship year, 2005, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It's more than yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to, I, Texas Longhorns. Sorry. I mean, you know what? I live, I'm bleeding burnt orange. Bleeding burnt orange, though. So, Landon? You know. Okay, so that's a that's kind of a trick question for me. I, it would be a team that everybody would recognize from me would be the the Chicago Bulls back in the the, the time that that Jeez. Michael played there because I watched him go through the challenges with. Uh, sorry about that. Hold on one sec. That's a cop out answer. Yeah. Well, Brian, well he's well he's coming. But what do you got? Got 
I, I, I love those Bulls teams. It's tough to pick one of those. So I'm going to, with my one team that I'm going to pick, I'm a Homer Chicago, Chicago fan, but the, the 85 Chicago Bears are by far um, my favorite team of all time just because they worked so well together and they flaunted as good as they were. The Super yeah. Bowl shuffle, if it, you know, for those of you who can recall all that, that was the team that just they were new, they, they knew when they stepped on the field they were going to win, uh, minus the one game that they lost against the Miami Dolphins. So, right. Um, that, so that I'm was, I got the dog muted, so uh, I'm back. Um, all right. The, so I, my team was the '85 Bears. What what's your you got the Jordan era Bulls? I got I got Jordan, I got Jordan just about any year through there. But my my favorite team of all time would be the the. The Dallas Christian Chargers, the last year that I coached, we went 14-0. and 0. Um, We were ranked second in the nation in private schools, won the state championship. And my son graduated that year. So uh, that was uh, – that, that's – what I loved about that team is, is I worked with them from the time they were in the seventh grade all the way up. And we, everybody knew they were destined for greatness. And, I mean, they just – they were the most dominant high school football team that I have ever seen in this area. And, and we even had some public school coaches tell us that – we would have walked right through them. That's awesome. Well, I, I, the reason I asked that question, and that's a great answer, Lenny, because it, it brings it close, you know, a little closer to home that you can relate to. The reason I asked that question is because there's a lot of things that are in common with all of those teams, whether it be leadership, working together. You, you can't you can't get it all unless you have all of that. So. Um, I know we're out of time, and that's why I want to ask that question at the end because, um, you know, I, I think it just kind of wraps everything together. So, with that being said, Sean, thank you so much for joining today. Thanks for bringing your energy. Um, I know that's not hard for you, so thanks for sharing your energy with all of us. Uh, as of course, it's the first of the month, and we've got our, our two uh, first of the month kickoff co-hosts, so Mark and Kendra. Thank you guys for co-hosting with, with us. And yes. Landon, of course, thanks for everything you do. I uh, hope you guys got something out of today. We will continue this topic next week. But until then, have a wonderful Mother's Day weekend and happy Mother's Day, Kendra, in particular. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so